Shabbat Shalom. We get into the last portion of Vayikra, Leviticus. You know, Leviticus is usually is divided in three portions, or three groups, or three sections. The first one is the korbanot, or the offerings. The second portion is divided between uh, tahor and tamay, clean and unclean. And finally, we have the portion about kedoshim, or holiness, sanctification. And um, one, one thing that I would like to tell you, the chapter nine, uh, uh, this will be better if we read it from chapter 18 up to chapter 20. That is, is a better way to see it. Because chapter 19 is only the continuation of chapter, of, uh, chapter 18. But here it's very popular because there is a verse at the beginning, you know, uh, where it says uh, basically, Ki kadosh, uh, or the, 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 uh, be a Marta elegen, tell to them, you know, Kedoshin you, Ki kadosh, Ani Adonai Elohehem. You know, uh, and this has been translated in many different ways and many different forms. Hebrew language sometimes is, is sometimes difficult to translate it in our regular language because it has a, a certain connotation. But uh, basically, it is not, uh, it is not the idea like uh, many people say today, you know, you need to be, you need to be holy because God is holy. Uh, and that's what it means. You know, sometimes it's like a, I become holy. I, I made myself holy, you, you know, and, and understanding the word holiness is, is, is very difficult. In chapter 20, the word, because you, you, are, going, you are set apart, or you, you are no like the others, no? because God has set you apart. It's the same word about Kedoshim, being, being separated. Now, the question here is, and we were talking about this. What it really means to be holy? That is a very interesting question. You know, if I may hear a, 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 a question, each one of you, and I ask you, each one of you, please tell me what it means to you to be holy. Each one of us we has our own understanding about holiness. Some, they are very religious, and they think it because they are giving, you know, mea culpa, mea culpa, and I pray three times a day, and I go, uh, I do this, and I do that, I am holy. No, or I make myself holy. No, and, and uh, we need to go back to Bereshit, to the beginning. What the Creator make us, or how He make us, how He create us, his line is an image. Excellent. Then he has put in ourselves, he has put in ourselves who he is. Mm -hmm. All of us, without exception, if you call yourself a human being, <laughs> you know, you have, you are the image of the creator. Now, the question now is, what it means the image of the creator, or the likeness of the, the creator? You immediately, being, being human, you become very physical, because you are limited to the physical world. No? And you start thinking about, oh, I, I look like God. <laughs> what do you mean I look like God? He has two eyes, a nose, a mouth, you know? He has long hair, short hair. And, and you know what is very interesting? Today is very popular about the feminist groups. You know? That God is no male, it's female. Because now we assign to him also sex. We, we are totally unfounded, totally flying from one way to the other. What it really means to be like God? his character. And here, you read very carefully chapter 19 and 20, 
What are you going to find is the Ten Commandments are described in, in the chapter 19, are the Ten Commandments. Don't do this, don't do that, you know. You don't steal, don't false testimonies, don't do, you know, don't do things that are wrong. Why? Because that is what makes you holy. In other words, the characteristics of the Creator is what distinguishes you from the rest of the world. Now, most of us would think uh, performing is going to make me like God. Most of us, we are performers. We are actors. We play a role. The Creator is not impressed by your acting abilities. <laughs> and he never is impressed about how good you can fool the rest of the world. Right. You know why? Because he knows you better than you know yourself. He knows us in such a way that doesn't matter how good we are lying to others. He knows us. And you know, sometimes some of us, we're such a good liars that we start to believe our own lies. Here, in this small chapter, 19, there are 16 times they say, Ani Adonai, Eloheim. I, I am your God. I am God, your God. After all, and, all, and at the end, he's going to tell you, uh, fear me. That really the word fear is not about to be scared of him, but uh, respect, be reverent, kabod. Now, let me ask you this simple question. Where in the areas in your life that make you holy. Your actions, how you live, your integrity, your responsibility, your loyalty. You know, I wish, I wish the people understand the word love, ahaba, in the right way. That means loyalty. To be loyal doesn't mean about psh, my heart is shaking or palpitating. Love means to be loyal. That's true understanding of Haba. It's not about what made me my heart pumping, but what I am faithful to. And you can be loyal to many things. And the Creator say. Behafta Riaha Kamoha. Nineteen eighteen. You know, and this is very interesting a statement that we repeat every Shabbat after we finish the Shema. You know? And many people, and especially in the in, in the religion of Christianity, when they hear our Rabbi Yeshua speaking and he say, you know, when he was asked in Habesora Matayahu, in the, in the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 22, verse 37, you can read that portion. And it says, you know, they ask a um, teacher, or say, rabbi, really, they call it, rabbi. You know, how you can condensate, and can, can you make the whole scriptures, you know? And, and he used the Shema, and he used uh, also uh, this portion that we are talking today, you know? And what he say is this, love your God with all your heart, with all your being, with everything. You know, he say love your God. He didn't say love me. You know, interesting? For those one who still has a certain problem to understand, okay? He says, love your God. Okay, with all your heart, with all your, all your means, for you. A strength or your power. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. You find it here. Many people say 
Rabá y Yeshua inventen New Torah. O he brought a new Torah. And this is the problem with Judaism, especially with rabbinical Judaism, that they don't have to try the right understanding about who Yeshua was. Remember, Yeshua never said, I am God. That's just something that had put uh, words in his mouth by editors later on. They had manipulated many things. But what he very clear say is love your God with all your heart, with your own being, <laughs> your thing. And what's very obvious is he told his people because he never, ever, and this is something that my Gentile friends get upset with me. He never talked to the Gentiles. He talked to Israel. Why? Because Israel had a very big duty, you call it, or responsibility, you call it, or calling, you want to call it. You can make it in different way. To be or legoyim. Lie to the world. And what a, what a the lie that he needed, he needed to bring? It was the Torah. And what was the basic of the Torah? What were the tablets? There were the 613 uh, laws. What the Ten Commandments? And everything else comes from the Ten Commandments. And sometimes they are applications of the time. For certain times. It will make a eternal uh, applications. You know, it's like a today with the laws. A judge make a dictamen of a some case, and that dictamen becomes a law for ne for the next case. And the creator didn't do that. The, what the creator say, every case needs to be judged according to their own causes. You don't need to base it in prior or after. You need to see, base it on the causes of the of the case. But today, you see our jurisprudence, you know, our libraries, books and books of what St. Josh say, and then cre creates a precedent. And that's the problem. Now, when we talk about which religion we do follow, nobody knows. Even the ultra-Orthodox the Hasidim, the, you know that they, they are so full of themselves sometimes. Because they think they are the holies of the holies. Yes, they are holy. Because they are separated. But holy to, wha to whom? They are holy to themselves. Are they following the Creator? No, they are following their own understandings. And all the religions are very similar. And the Creator say that you shall be holy as I am holy. In other words, don't follow men, follow me. And at the end of chapter 19, very interesting, He's going to say something that, you know, uh, he mentioned all the different, uh, he said, uh, this is talking about that you had, you, at the end you need to have the right measures of uh, scales and things like that. But look at, look at how he ends, okay? Ani Adonai Elohim, asher hoxiati et hem. Me eres Misraim. Basically, what he's saying it is, I am the Lord, your God, who took you out of Egypt. And what is the first commandment that we have in the ten words? Going back. And how he started after being 
uh, after being uh, holy like me. Honor your mother and your father. And here change. In, in, the, in, the, in, in the Torah, we have honor father and mother. Here is start with the mother. See, why he con oh, that's a contradiction. You know, people are, I don't know. Anyway, but look at the two first commandments that he is making a very big. Honor mother and father and keep the Shabbat. The, the call the hukim. And why? Because mother and father represent him, giver of life. And the Shabbat represents that he is giving to us the whole land for us to enjoy and we need to respect it. We need to rest on the right times. And the rest is not for us, uh, and sort of for him, it's for us. Then we need to start to, what are we calling, divide the, the, uh, the, the, the word by portions. I was looking this word in, in Spanish, there's a beautiful word called desglosar, but I, I couldn't find the, the real meaning in English, in English, there is no a clear word. Uh, only to uh, separate, divide, or cut. You know, things like that. Uh, and uh, but uh, what it means is to really look at the scriptures for the real meaning. No, what do I want that they mean? But uh, what the Creator is telling us in the basic principles. And the only way that you can be kadosh, holy, if you identify with the creator. In other words, you do what the creator will do. People say, how I can be holy? And I say, you know, it's not that complicated. Think in this way, what the creator will do. You, you know, uh, and and that, that will give you a little bit of way to think about it. You know, the Creator just giving a moral uh, standards. He has told us what is right and what is wrong. It's up to us to follow him or not. We as men, we need to have responsibility and integrity. You know, do you remember the, all the process that have been teaching you all the years about from emuna, faith, to bitahon, trust. That is the first step. I know the revelation of God. I know that he exists, and I say I believe, but I that belief needs to put on practice. How many people, how many people <coughs> like to say, oh, I believe in God? Now the question is, that is enough. That make you holy. The next step is bitajon. And what I mean bitajon? Trust. Then put on march what the creator say that you need to do. That not only words, but action. Because our God is a God of action. That's the true relationship with him. He's doing. He's not waiting and closing your eyes. Oh, God is going to do it for me. I believe in miracles. But let me tell you, that's the last resource. And that's the last thing when men cannot do anything about it. It's the creator who is going to intervene. I believe in that. You know, I always say, and uh, sometimes people say, define me what is a miracle. Because uh, there are people that are always in the, I call it the, the flyer agents. You know, they, they have wings in their back that are always floating in the air. They never go down to earth. You know, and I need to tell these people, go down to earth. 
Start walking on the earth. You know, God didn't make us flyers. If he wanted to make a flyer, he would give us a light bones and, and wings. He didn't put wings on us, and, and our bones are very heavy. That means that we need to hold us and we need to walk on the earth. Okay? And one day you want to, to float in, in the moon, you will do it. But right now you're here on the earth. And you need to be practical, pragmatic. Then look at the creator. He was not trying to ask us to do impossibles. He wanted to deal with us and to talk to us. The Vitajón is trust. I trust you. That I, I don't only believe in you, but I trust that you want to do the best for me. Blessed be his, your name. That's his, a relationship with the creator. He wants the best for us. Let me ask you this question. You as parents, you want the worst for your children? There must be parents that are crazy, but a, 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 you know, but a normal parent. What one, what one for their children? He, he wants the best. Yes or no? Yes. You know, and there are some parents that have the guilt that no, I was not a good parent, I was not the father of the year, I was not the mother of the year, and who cares? You know. What is more important is not to have your, you your claim that you are the best mother or the best father in the world. What you need to care is about that your children are doing the best. And doesn't matter how old are your children, and you are a mother, you forgot to cut the umbilical cord. You never cut it. You always you're going to be linked, even if you don't want it. And when your children are not doing something right, how you feel? How many parents feel ashamed of their own children? Now let us ask the Creator, as our Heavenly Father, how He feels about us. And you know, and I am using the word feel that I don't like it. Because God is not a God of feelings. That's a totally human invention, our feeling, I feel. No? And they have destroyed this beautiful word, love. And this is what I'm, this portion is talking about. Love is not, you know, right now, but what's wrong if they love each other? What's wrong if there is love in the world? Oh, there's love, there's love. Give me a break. You're talking about loving with your other hand, you're killing the other guy, you know? Or you're doing things that are so terrible and you need to justify by this word love. <laughs> they say that love covers multitude of sins. Give me a break. Give me a break. That is, that is what I call it the religions of feelings. The real relationship with the Creator is about to be honest, to be, to have integrity, to be responsible. And many of us, we are running away from that. The next thing in these passages that you want to read, that is important to see it, because he is talking to us. It's, it's about the direction that we go in, how we live our lives. You know, it's very easy to talk about it. And you can even complain about things. But the question is not about others, it's about you. We always project on others, but we never look at ourselves. Look at what the others are doing. That's a typical uh, holier than thou. I don't do what they do. I am much better. You know, be careful that you put yourself in a pedestal and you are holier than thou. And you do not act the way that you need to be. 
because your integrity is very important. And this is what I, I have this, this long and say, what you see is what you get. The most important thing is not about performing, like I start saying to you, to be an actor or an actress, but to be yourself. You know, I was talking to somebody who is an actor, and I was asking, what makes you a good actor? And his, and, and, and his explanation, he said to me, is the person who identifies with the character in such a way they lose completely himself or herself and become the other person. And you know what? Many of us, are, we are professional actors or actresses. We are performing a role instead to be who we are. This is the reason that most of now is very, Im very normal. Now there is no anything that you, you cannot be supposedly, you know? If you were born in this way, you can be the other way. If you were here, you can go there. Never accepting who you really are. And, and in, 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 in order to take guilt or to take uh, any kind of immorality in your actions, you cover with a gray covering that they have. And that word is love. <laughs> and the 99% of the people say, ah. Because they are only dealing with the feelings and they are not dealing with reality. Our God is a God of action. Is a real God. Is now and doing His things. Let me tell you this. Uh, at the end, He say in verse twenty-two, okay, of chapter uh, twenty, okay. Please. Uh, he say, Ushmarten es kol hukotai, be es kol mishpatai, be asetein otam belo tikyo. In other words, take care of all my decrees <coughs> and all my judgments and keep it. Okay, make it right. In order that the land or the earth, okay, will, will be right and will not reject you or vomit you. We talk about this nation that are doing whatever they want to do. Right now, it's very popular to be open-minded and to be very liberal. And anything is okay if there is love. You know, that they will tell you. And if you say something against them, you are judged, you are trash, and you are stopped to talk. And even they can put you in jail. Because now you bring the, the Message of hate. <coughs> and what little by little is happening right now is our own self-destruction. <coughs> and the saddest part of all of this, like I said last week, I will repeat it this week again. Many of us are that we supposedly love God and we follow God. We have bought the lie, and we have accepted it. Because we are in this world that if you are okay, I am okay, everybody is okay. And the truth of the matter is not. Let me finish this in this way, this way because it's important. 
right now we are going a very difficult, uh, I love Israel. We just went through Yom Asmaut. I was there in, uh, in the city of Montreal with my, with, with, my, with my flag, you know, talking. And they were outside, there were people protesting against Israel. Among them were the ultra Hasidim, the ultra Orthodox, the Natura Carta. And, and they were speaking very ugly against Israel. These people who call themselves keepers of the Torah, okay? With the flag, of the Palestinian flag, and telling us that we were wrong. Why? Because for them, the only way that they can be in Medina, Israel, will be if the Mashiach bring it, no? And this is the problem of the religious people. Everything they're respecting is is the creator is going to do it. And the real understanding is this. The creator brought us here to earth for us to do it. That's the difference. And I am not saying to you that Israel is the most special country right now because I disagree about a lot of things that they are doing in Israel right now. But we want it or not, it's our state. You know, every nation has their own religion, their own, and we, the Jewish people, we have only one little bitty state. And we are hated by 99% of the population of the world. And Israel has brought more blessings in these last 71 years than any other nation in the world and we are still being hated. And what is the mistake of Israel today? They're trying to be accepted by the other nations, and they're trying to become like the other nations, thinking that that is going to give acceptance. Look at, right now, this problem, because this is what we are talking about. And I'm sorry I need to mention this, this subject, but uh, needs to be mentioned. One of the things that Israel is very proud today, that are the only Middle Eastern nation that is open to the LGBT and all these numbers, names. And they are accepting to everybody. And this group, the LGBT, whatever it is, they are against Israel. And they don't say anything, and they, and they support the Palestinians, they support the Arabs, no? And they are the ones killing them. That to tell you that there is no even logic in this world. But I want to tell you the mistake of Israel is that they're trying to be like the other nations. And they have tried that from the beginning with King Shaul. Choose as a king because we want to be like the other nations. That's the mistake. And when they want to be like the other nations, what they're doing? Rejecting the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are in, in hard times. And in my prayer, not about being holier than thou or being better than anybody else, totally the contrary. Because if you are in front of the presence of the Creator, you are going to realize how small you are. You know, I love the words of Yeshua. In chapter 5 of the Havesorah Matayahu, he says something very interesting. You know, blessed are those who are poor of spirit, because they are going to inherit it, the kingdom of God. And I'm going to tell you something. I wish that they understood that, that statement in the Hebrew language. Because what he was saying is, blessed are those who really do not think they are greater than anybody else, 
they're no better than anybody else. But as they look at the Creator, and they humble themselves because how great is God and how small we are. The true humility comes when we acknowledge and recognize the size that we are in comparison to the Creator and how much wisdom comes from Him for us to live with Him. And this is the idea about you shall be holy as I am holy means to imitate his characteristics and his way of doing things. That's what makes us different to the rest of the world. Not about how much money we have, not about how known we are, and not how popular we are. Today, it's very easy to follow somebody who is very well known, and somebody who is very uh, charming or whatever. You know, we follow personalities. We follow charismatic personalities. Imitate people instead to follow God, to imitate him. And this is what I, he is asking us now, open our eyes, and we need to be like him, to, because he makes us to his likeness and image, and we are part of him. We need to follow him. Shabbat Shalom.